It's well, time Lawrence. to talk to the internet about what did you, John oh, the yeah, Master talk to, Chief. Talk, talk to the internet number 36. 36! Uh, Lawrence, what did you think about John 117 Halo Infinite Master Chief oh, Open World? He's got a number on his chest! So, uh, <laughs> one of the things that I thought was super cute is uh, when they're showing like them stamping out the Mjolnir armor or whatever, it has that like little piece of liquid metal kind of drop down and hit a little platform and kind of congeal and then it starts yeah. floating. That that's the Xbox boot, which I thought was super super cool. Uh, oh, just, uh, it's it's just like a really really tiny thing, uh, but I was like, oh that's neat. Hold on, I'm looking at a video now. Oh oh okay, there we go. I'm I'm actually I'm watching it for for B-roll on my on my, but I didn't know I didn't realize it was the uh, the Xbox boot. I. Th I, it's got to be an intentional reference, right? It, it looks got, so it similar. The same yeah, camera placement, be. sort of? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Um, Definitely. But yeah, the so I guess we can just tick through all the demos and, and share our expert gamer commentary, right? <laughs> well, I just uh, I just got raided by Eddie Burback, and you're joining in to us talking about Xbox. Xbox. So, X, so much Xbox Series X. I mean, like, so I, I don't... Just overall, how did how did you feel about it? Well, there are a couple of things I really wanted that are still not happening. Uh, I mean, the obvious ones are price and release date. Um, yeah, yeah. In addition to that, there weren't release dates for pretty much any game, um, aside from the ones they've already confirmed. So, like, Infinite will be at launch, but for the rest of them, it's like it's nothing. Uh, there was just they so gave weird. July. There was July twenty eighth for one of the games that was the. Uh, um, the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids game. Oh, Grounded? That's what it was, yeah. They, huh. they gave it, so that's like a week from now. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, yeah, you're right. There were, there were no release dates. Which, which was my chief complaint about the PlayStation 5 conference, too. Although, I think that, I think that both of these conferences have different business agendas uh, in the way that Sony and Microsoft have different agendas. I feel like Sony's still trying to sell a box, whereas Microsoft Thanks, just wants you on Game Pass, which I think they, I think they hit that messaging pretty well. They didn't, like, slam it with a brick like they have in the past of just putting Game Pass branding on everything, but they did have to reiterate a couple of times that like all of the Microsoft games you see you're gonna get on the first day with Game Pass. So I think it was more of a showcase about the value proposition of Game Pass for the next couple of years than it was about the explicit value of dropping five hundred bucks on a Series X. Mm -hmm. Um I, I there was a before most or not mo well, let's say half the games, they said console launch exclusive and we are assuming then the console is coming out this year. So I guess that's a release date. Could that be considered a release date? Console launch exclusive. Maybe. I mean, there's a, that's such a weird phrase. There's a couple of ways to interpret that. <laughs> is that the game is launching exclusively on the Xbox when it launches. I don't know that that necessarily... <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. I think that just means Xbox and PC for a window. It's like that timed exclusivity thing that usually happens with PlayStation, except they can't say platform exclusive because it would also be PC, I'm assuming. And I feel, because I mean, they're not gonna push the launch of the console, right? Like it's gonna launch November of this year. It has to, yeah. It, There's it no has reason for to. not to. Yeah. We, um, so so I feel like then that's, if, it, if they say it's a console launch exclusive and the, and the console's coming out this year, <laughs> it's gotta be November, right? I mean, it has to be. I, Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> that just I the way I interpret that, uh, which is is not the most generous interpretation, is that when the game launches, it will launch exclusively on this console. But yeah, yeah I, I don't I don't know that that means that it's going to exclusively launch with the console. Yeah. Oh, God, you're right. That phrase could be could go either way. Oh, my weird. brain's snapping now. It's really weird because that, that's what I interpreted it as, right? I interpreted it as when the console comes out. Those are the games we get. That's that's what I thought. Um, but I could be totally wrong. <laughs> so, who knows? I just uh, I just realized yeah. John Master Chief has a has a RoboCop walk. Like every time he steps, it goes ka chunk dunk oh, dunk. Yeah, I also absolutely. feel like this is the best time you've gotten a look at Master Chief's butt. Look at that. I mean, I you're not I, you're not watching my game, but <laughs> I am actually I am actually watching the the uh, Halo trailer. But I didn't I didn't stare at his butt like you did. I should. Why aren't you? I know. I sh I should have. Look at them you're cheeks. Right. He's got nice Hold curvature. On. Holy shit, I man! Go. I gotta find the the butt. Where's we the need butt? to. What? Ooh, uh, it's What's at your... 
on the YouTube time code, it's like thirty three forty nine. But I don't know if that's what you're watching. That has the whole I, uh, like that's, lead that's up in it. That's exactly that's exactly what I'm watching. All right, let's I'm gonna, let's pause it on his butt here so we could take a look. Um, did did Halo look like a graphical increase to you at all? Like, did it look any better than Halo Five? Mm, I mean, it's it it looked like it was running at higher resolution through YouTube compression, but <sighs> Halo's weird. Halo, like, Halo's aesthetic is sort of designed around things that were easy to render on early 3D. So, <laughs> to make it look better, you just kind of have to put some scuff marks on pretty low-poly stuff. Also, it is a Halo ring, which, aesthetically, I think people just associate with certain visual styles that also were kind of created to run on an Xbox, an original yeah, that are, Xbox. So. That are old. Yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. But I thought like I mean, the vegetation looked cool. Um, I think there are hints of that sort of thing where like you pop up in the world map. The draw distance looks pretty cool. There are these cool new growths everywhere that uh, are I guess intended to bust up the visual the visual variety of a of a Halo ring a little bit. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm not a Halo scholar, but like these these like giant vertical pillars that are kind of popping out of the ground. Those are not typically on a Halo ring, right? No, those are those are definitely part of the the new world, but. They just they looked so Minecrafty. It was just it was just weird. Like I I don't know. It was one of those things where I was I was expecting, and I guess maybe I shouldn't have been expecting this considering it's open world now. But uh, I was expecting like a huge graphical increase for Halo Infinite. But but since it's they they've increased the gameplay and not necessarily the the graphics, which is okay. That's that's fine. Yeah, I I feel like a lot of the features they tout uh, as graphical advancements, you're just it's going to be impossible to see through YouTube compression. <clears throat> yeah. Like 4K yeah. 60 FPS, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that's, that'll probably look amazing on a TV, but there's really no yeah. way, I think, to, to replicate that fidelity. Not, well, not yet. It'd be nice someday. I don't even, like, the conference wasn't even being streamed in 4K, was it? Yeah. This is the thing that keeps um, happening. I don't, I don't think so. It was a 1080p 60s from yeah. what I saw. So. so even still, like, and, and I don't know, that starts to get into to weird dynamics. I remember when, like, the PS3s and 360s were coming out. Everybody's like, nobody has an HD HDTV. Um, so when those consoles came out, it was kind of hard to see where the real advances were. And I feel mm -hmm. like it's going to be roughly the same for this, this generation of consoles. People have to have, like, 60 hertz 4K, 4K displays with HDR. And then, yeah, yeah. So the same old diminishing returns aspect of, of tech. Um, somebody, somebody did actually notice that, like, if you compare this to the PlayStation stream, PlayStation did have that Ratchet and Clank demo that showed off like the SSD loading with all the teleporters and stuff. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I don't. There wasn't like exactly a gimmicky tech moment like that in the Infinite demo, which I guess is what you might expect. But I don't know. I feel like the Infinite demo was more trying to convince people that Halo Combat Evolved is back, rather than uh, tell them that this is like new HD Halo or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. It, it definitely was because it they didn't really show me much of a of an increase. But I, I I guess I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged by Halo's like Far Cry style gameplay, um, and I I think Halo's like I, we've we've seen so many Halos that are single player and so linear mm, that yeah, yeah that 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 now when I see this I'm like, is this what I wanted? Like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> like I, because I, I mean, like I really liked Halo's story, and and like I really liked playing that that linear style gameplay with you know with friends and stuff like that. I was like, is this what I wanted? I don't. I'm not sure. I don't know. I well, it's it's fascinating to bring that up because Halo has had a bit of an identity crisis is way too strong and dramatic. But like for me, uh, and th and this is, I this is going to verge on elitist territory, so I apologize in advance. But like <laughs> Halo, Halo was good. And it carved out really good ground for itself because it had a cool setting and it did a lot of stuff right in terms of adapting shooters to controllers. Uh, it did mm -hmm. a lot of stuff right. Um, did, but yeah. still, like, that strength was an adaptation. It, the, the strength of Halo, for me at least, was finding ways to circumvent restrictions at the time, which is that you have a lot of people who are new at playing shooters on controller. Um, so it has twin stick movement. It's got big floaty jumps. It's got really, it's like got a really aggressive auto aim. Like, it, it nailed a lot of stuff to make shooters feel right. But then people got a lot better at playing shooters on stick. So a lot of the yeah. things that Halo did now are kind of, are fully anachronistic. That's so, right. And then, but then you have like the Halo Five dilemma of like, well, if you give Master Chief sprint and dodge, it stops feeling like Halo. So how do you make a game that was, to, by my estimation, largely 
defined by the restrictions it was circumventing when those restrictions are no longer around. Um, well, that's, that to me was the single player. That was the whole point is that they made this game because like all the stuff you're saying is exactly correct. That's the reason Halo when it first came out was so huge is because it felt like you were playing a shooter with a, with a controller well, like naturally. Um, but I also thought the story was the the whole other part of that, which is that when you got into a Halo game, it was like, oh man, like you know Master Chief, you know the character, you know Cortana, you you know those characters pretty well, and you were excited to get back into that world. So I just wonder if that's if Halo Infinite will also have that. Well, I mean, they I think they established a, ma- a clear and magnanimous villain who uh, yep. you know yep. it. I I just got immediate Thanos vibes because he's bald. And of course, he's, he's like got that manner of like he relishes combat, but is still an intelligent conqueror kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. man, they really I I don't want to like it from my by my perception. It's like too obvious to be like that looked like Thanos at Thanos. But still, that dude is straight up Thanos. Uh, it's Thanos. Yeah, but that's good. <laughs> I mean, Halo hasn't had a, a really, I guess, strong antagonist for a while. Especially Halo 5, man. That, even that game's marketing couldn't figure out who the bad guy was. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I feel like it, in terms of like the story and experience thing, you know, if, if they have a big angry red guy who's monstering you the whole game. Um, also, Cortana didn't show up, which was interesting. I swore at the end he was going to like hold up a chip and Cortana was going to materialize <laughs> above it being Help! like, yeah, save me, Master Chief. Again. <laughs> Actually, I can't remember what happened to Cortana at the end of Halo 5, so I'm kind of, my pants are falling down a little bit. Uh, but yeah, in regards to story, I I don't know. It's it's interesting. Bungie always had a really, a weirdly light and, and enigmatic touch. And I think yeah. you can see that ratcheted up in Destiny to the point where they're like, Bungie just feeds you a bunch of weird, mysterious crap to almost make you not care. Or mm-hmm. really establish your expectations about what what you're going to get in terms of the story. But yeah, once 343 took over, it it feels like they wanted to make it more of a kind of directly told space opera sci-fi kind of story, which I thought worked really well for 4, not so great for 5. Not so great for (laughs) 5. But what are we getting in Infinite? Angry Man has the ring, and he's going to be evil with it. Which, you know, that's all you need for a good space shooter. That's all we've had forever. So I feel like the simplicity is back. I feel like the, the gameplay demo explicitly was basically saying, hey, remember... Remember the second level from Combat Evolved? It's back. Uh, but you can walk, you can go everywhere and do everything. And I, yeah, I hope so. That's what it looked like. I mean, like it was. Uh, I, I'm playing a lot of uh, Ghost of Tsushima now, and it looks exactly like that. You hit mm, pause, mm, and you go, "Oh, there's seven thousand waypoints around me. I got to go to all of those." Yeah, you know? let me go. Let me go look back at that that map screen because yeah, you land, and it's like take out the three things, and you can do it in whatever order you want. I there are other there are other ones too, like outside of the gun batteries you have to take out oh um there's a uh, there's a spot there like let me see here hold on yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to find that mini map because it's it's interesting i feel like a ton of games uh went down the route of like we're gonna make a, a game with a mini map and that mini map's going to be filled with bullshit and that would have like <laughs> that was amazing four years ago but four years later after they're four years into development on this game and suddenly everyone hates mini maps because it got played out Oh, I got creative updates available. Thanks, Creative Cloud. Always, always looking out down there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it just looks like it looked, you know, Far Cry. It's a Ubisoft game, um, but but uh, but Halo. Man, so I had a yeah. vision last night, and and I was I was hoping it was true. Uh, so so like in the in the key art they showed last night, you, like it showed that Master Chief had his grappling hook. And you saw some of that in the, the gameplay demo of him yeah. like yanking yeah. barrels and pulling himself towards enemies. That, that's cool. And I feel like that's, that's how you make ma- ma- or Halo modern without adding sprint and dash is to give Master Chief some kind of maneuverability tool. Oh, yeah, you're right. There are icons outside of that playable space. Yeah. What I was hoping is that Halo Infinite would be like a whole, like it would take place on a Halo ring and that you would use a grappling hook to like yank yourself across the Halo. Um that you would have this like high powered jet boots or something and you could like it would almost be like an environment sim almost like dynasty warriors environment where you've got oh. like marines all over the halo and they're all fighting all the time and then some marines on the other side of the halo are like master chief we need your help and then you just like grapple yourself across a like off of a building and sling yourself through space to land on the yeah. other side of the halo without like any loading or anything i was like oh that's next gen power that I didn't see. really happen though <laughs> instead well, 
there's a, there's a whole other aspect to this that I don't know that they are adding. I maybe you know this, um, but co-op like they're gonna are they gonna have co-op for this or is this strictly single player? That's a really good question. Because because if it's strictly single player, that that's fine. They showed it, but I wonder. I just Halo Infinite to me just seemed like something that they could then also drop co-op into, and then you can go around and do all this stuff with other Master Chiefs. But it, I don't know. I uh, people in my chat are saying definitely co-op, but I don't actually it's, know that that's that's the case. It's got to be as much as Infinite seems to be them like with the statement trying to like win back the favor of classic Halo fans. I mean, b based on, like, you are Master Chief on the Halo again, and, and again, this demo is just the second level of combat. I mean, that's, that's hyper-reductive, but it is functionally the second level of combat evolved. Right. Uh, it's, I cannot imagine a world where this game doesn't have... It's gotta. ...open co-op. Yeah, it has to. But then, like, um, yeah, but then people, like, the draw distances are wild, and people can just go off and do their own thing, which I guess there's no problem with that. Huh. Yeah, I, that's that's just what it, it sounded like to me is that like they're going to drop you into an open world or a semi-open world and then you're going to have four Master Chiefs running around taking out objectives and stuff, which is cool. Um, and that's this, that's something that would then show off the power of what they could do, but they didn't show it off in this specific showcase. So. That's true, yeah. Plenty of marketing beats left for that, though. Um, yeah. Presuming. Yeah. I think they, they showed off enough... Uh, I like some of some of the mechanics you saw were neat. Like I, I'm just watching through the demo again, and there was like there were brutes that were charging. He shot their legs, so they stumbled, and then he shot their heads because while they were stumbling, their heads moved forward. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that's neat. More like one of the again one of the combat evolved aspects was the like unique gun combos and techniques you could do on individual enemies. Whether it's like the the pistol shot to the back for the I think the hunters. Um, nope, they're not hunters. What are the what are the worm dudes called that have like all the armor? The brutes. Are those brute? No, they're not. They have like the, the green sure. guns. Yeah, I, I hunt. They are hunters. Okay, I don't know why I was. I thought they were hunters. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's yeah. It's it's this like combat evolve was cool because it like in addition to opening up uh, shooters to controllers, uh, it also had like top level tips that you would eventually learn to be able to beat it on legendary and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like there's some degree of that represented here in, in showing the particular combat mechanics of various enemy types. Uh, so I don't know. It, it does seem to be like they just really ran through all the things that all the design elements that made combat evolved really good and decided to make a sequel to that game, um, which is exciting. I think Yeah, that's, I think that's cool. And is, is theoretically what people say they want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious if it's going to be all on the halo. Uh, it's probably not, but, uh, uh, yeah. I, uh, what what bums me out though is I think we've seen a couple of examples so far of, of open world games where you get to choose your own objectives and stuff, and how that can make storytelling a really weird proposition. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So and that's and that's what I that's kind of what, again what I was worried about with Halo is because again mm. it was very very linear, and it was super clear that they you know they put you in this level. Your objective is to clear out the library, and you're like, all right, go clear out the library. So you go do it. But this is different if you've got a bunch of master chiefs running around, you know, doing a bunch of different, <laughs> a bunch of different things. Um, and I don't know that it'll necessarily have the, uh, the same, uh, you know what though? I, I take that back. Like Far Cry, Far Cry, I think did that pretty well. They still had a uh, good narrative, even though it was co-op. Um, I feel like they, they could pull that off a little bit. Yeah. So, eh, it's, and it's doable. This, this, even the same setup sort of can apply where it's like, okay, in act one, we're, we we got to introduce the monkey man as the big bad guy, but then also there's this like lower level covenant dude or the what are they called the banished or whatever, and he's the bad guy you got to take down in Act One. But first of all, we got to take out these anti aircraft batteries so more marines can land. Okay, now we got to get this portable generator up, and that means we got to take out this laser cannon. It's on the cliff yeah. safe, <laughs> and like in between in between every chunk of open world objectives you get, it's like okay, come back to base for your debriefing, and that's when they can show you a little cutscene of a holographic monster man just talking shit to you and your bros. So you get really pissed <laughs> off. <Yeah. laughs> That's uh, Obi Fizzle in, uh, I think in your chat said um, it's coming out on the current gen Xbox One as well. So I still don't know where the technological advancements are. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, it's so it's it's interesting because like I feel like in a lot of ways Microsoft is trying to sidestep a lot of the expectations of new generations. 
The technological advancement, theoretically, is that you can start it on a current-gen console if you need to, buy it on a next-gen console, it'll automatically upgrade itself. Oh, that's cool. Or you can stream it to your phone, um, and you get all of that for 15 bucks a month. Like, that's that's Microsoft's next-gen, is their, their premise with Game Pass. Um, as opposed to, here's a new box that runs things a million times better. Which it will also do, but I feel like they are they are not really leaning into that marketing so much as the yeah. the ecosystem uh, is the idea. So like you can't as, as cool as the Ratchet and Clank teleporting was. There's no premise that you'll get that game for fifteen dollars when the console launches mm -hmm. and be able to play it on a PlayStation Four and be able to stream it to your phone. Yeah, uh, is, yeah. No, that's, but that's does true. that feature matter to you? I I don't know. You're, I mean, lots of uh, lots of people in your chat are flipping out about ray tracing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah yeah there's our there's rtx in there there's a little bit of ray tracing i guess on the dude's um, face yeah and like the lights blinking on it but like i feel like if you wanted to to really goose ray tracing there'd be like a giant lake somewhere in the in the halo ring that reflects like the top of the halo ring yeah. actually that would be sick why didn't they do that why didn't they do that there's a lot of things that they didn't they didn't do in this that lazy. i was easy lazy devs I, I, no, no, I don't, I'm not saying that at all. It's just more of like what they decided to show. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, they may have that very, very well. They may have all that stuff, and I'm sure they've got co-op gameplay floating around and stuff like that. They just didn't show any of it. So. Yeah. Um, Man, oh, dude. Like, imagine uh, they, they could do this. Like, uh, I mean, I guess this wouldn't actually be that hard, but um, it, the, the way that light could work around a, you know, free-floating halo ring in space with... with uh, God rays and ray tracing would be fucking awesome. So like, yeah. Imagine you're fighting and then the ring spins so that like the the half of the ring you're on is eclipsed by the other half of the ring. Like it'd be cool to be in a firefight and see the shadows like track and then everything like goes moving. pitch black for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then like like everything's lit up by just your gunfire and the enemy gunfire because Halo guns are are very bright, which is works really well and like a lot of tracing, uh, little wispy plasmas and stuff. And then, like a couple of minutes later, the sun starts to move outside, and so you get these really harsh lights and shadows starting to hit. That'd be sick, and that that, that would be, be like just be a graphical great, flourish. But that would, that would be great. <laughs> we didn't fucking get any lazy of that. devs, though. Uh, no, 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 no. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could even uh, play that in. Like, like imagine. Okay, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself, and this is bad because then I work myself up. But like, imagine, if you will. That uh, like like the the sun or the the ring is orbiting on a set timer. So if you want to like oh we got to take out that gun encampment, you could actually wait for the sun to be obscured so that you can sneak in or something like that. So like enemy vision cones could be based on illumination too. So you can be tactical. You can be like oh we're gonna have a ring eclipse in five minutes. Let's wait for that with all your Halo Bros. That'd be <laughs> sick. God, that'd be cool. I mean, I mean, look, all the things you're saying sound fantastic, but I just saw a dude drop in. And go. I'm gonna take out these three anti-air and shoot a bunch of weapons I already knew and have a grappling hook. So that's cool, but I don't know that we're getting any of that, other than the fact that we're getting a Halo that seems a little more open world with your buttons, which is cool, which yeah. is fun. That's fun, and it'll be on PC right away, which is also neat. Uh, I'm excited about that. Um, what? I still don't understand why it's called Infinite. I assumed it was because it was open world. <laughs> So, um, I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me. Uh, it's and I, and also, if I, you know what, I still don't know if they're going to do this or not. But I, I think they should just put a fucking battle royale in it and make it free to play. Make that battle royale free to play for Halo. Uh, even though it's way too late to do that, but they might as well at this point if they've got the if they've got the technology. To put a bunch of Master Chiefs together, why not? To, why not do that? Yeah, why not? Um, I it really, honestly, it should be it should be pretty simple. With I think with what they're what they're developing, I know it sounds ridiculous, but uh, <laughs> but hey, why not? Throw a battle royale out there. Who cares? Yeah, why not? What's the worst um, that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? It's a free to if it's a free to play battle royale, um, then why not? Who cares? Do it. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. What was next? What was after that? Oh, State of Decay. State, State of, of Decay. Decay. I I gotta admit I have not played a single State of Decay game. I played the first one for like three hours, and that was it. And that was all I played. Um, this was. I didn't State of Decay come out when. Wasn't it like coming out when Daisy was, was coming up, and everyone was like, 
We need another zombie game. That's a yeah. survival zombie game. It's, it's definitely from the like, from the era of uh, of zombie fanaticism. You know, uh, Walking yeah. Dead and things like that. Uh, I I mean it. I feel like zombies were not like most properties that relied around zombies. I feel like they're all trying to move away from being zombie focused and just more towards like dystopia focused. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it's fun to see the pivot. I don't recall there being an actual zombie in the trailer, but I could be wrong. There was yeah. There no, you're right. There was only deer zombie. Yeah. Um, uh, there was only deer zombie, and but there were no other zombies. Uh, I I don't know. I'm not sure. I did this. There are people that I think a lot of people play this game. I just don't. I just have never gotten into it. I don't know anybody else that, that's gotten into it either. I need to check it out. I what I I have. Yeah, there. I guess there's zombie deer. All right. There's zombie deer. <laughs> uh, scream tech though. That's those screams. Those are pretty good looking screams. Scream tech. Who's the real animal, Bruce? The question. The trailer seems to ask. I, does it, is, does the trailer ask that? Yeah, because she scream and then deer scream. Two, well, two scream. She, but she screams because she's trying to scare away the wolf. That's what and the then, deer's doing, trying to scare away her. Nah, deer scream is zombie. Deer scream's gonna kill her. Mm. <laughs> Maybe zombie just want to be left alone. Maybe we're the real monsters. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe zombies and humans should live together in harmony. I sh uh, I should check out State of Decay probably. Probably I, again. A lot, there are a lot of people that play it, and they say that it's really fun. Um, I'll just end up so. playing Doom again. Well, that's okay. You're allowed to play Doom. No, uh, Bruce. I have obligations. No, you're allowed. You're allowed to do that. Um, up next, Forza. Yes. Thank you for saying it. Italia. Hey, Forza. Did right? you? Isn't did that? you? Did you French pinch your, or did you chef kiss your fingers when you did that? No, it's Forza. a Forza. Forza. Mm. If you, uh, there will be a yeah. day when you're not allowed to make fun of stereotypical Italians, but it's not today. I mean, I'm not. I'm not even making fun of that. It's what Italians do. <laughs> the Italians do that sometimes. They they um, love cars and they love pinching their fing their index and uh, middle fingers together the, with their thumb. They love it and they love tomatoes. Love them. God bless <laughs> you guys. God bless them. Did, did, I think you're the only person I know that might be into Forza. Mm. Are you in? Are you into it or you are right? I'm super into it. Uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting because like, there's no way to make a sim racer look interesting. It's just impossible. Uh, after like what Gran Turismo Four, I feel like they all looked identical, and there's no feature you can add anymore that makes people turn their heads, which is usually why Horizon and like arcadey racers do so much better. Mm -hmm. It's because they kind of they're more approachable and they kind of have a more fun spirit. But. Eh, I don't know. It there's something cozy about Sim Racers being a, like a tentpole release with a new console. I guess mostly because of, of Gran Turismo, but uh, yeah, I don't know, man. They had like a, a lunar rover in Gran Turismo Seven. Where do you go from there? So <laughs> I get the like the like uh, the trailer may not have like excited anyone, but I'm very glad that Microsoft is still supporting this franchise. Yeah, but I don't know. Like you're gonna have fast loading, I guess, and maybe cloud rendered stuff I mean, it's it, hard it look, for me to it imagine looks, it looks i you know everything is like a it's a smaller step forward but it still looks better than than what i've seen i, I like i very rarely play these games so it's like to me i'm always like oh it's neat and then kind of move on because i love cars but i'm not going to sit down and play a sim racer um yeah i understand just, <laughs> you know just because it takes way way too much dedication and time to like f to actually get into this game like that's why obviously like what you just said about horizon it's an easier game to get into, but this one's just like a, this is like, you've got to have your sweet fucking chair and your sweet fucking race, you know, race wheel and your sweet fucking pedals and sweet fucking helmet and all that other stuff. And I don't have any of that. So hmm. I, I, I don't, I feel like barrier to entry is a little high. Uh, somebody far more knowledgeable than me, uh, Trey in chat says they're greatly improving the physics and sim engine. Uh, okay. So that's, that's good. I guess I, I still feel like you're, you know. The person who's folding their arms and being like, convince me, Phil Spencer. I don't know that this trailer is going to put a dent in them. Um, nor do I think that like your average racing game player is going to even be able to notice some of the tweaks they might be doing to the physics engine. But uh, not, your, not your average racer, yeah. But that's kind of not who the franchise is for. I feel, I feel like Forza Motorsport, the Sim series, is, is more for the prestige of it. Um, and it's also just like, again, I'm just glad Microsoft is... is putting weight behind it uh, yeah 
They it's did a, show a lot of uh, of like management teams and stuff in the trailer. Uh, so I wonder if there's going to be like a like Grid has some very light team management aspects. Hmm. I'm wondering if maybe Motorsport uh, will will lean more into that aspect with this version of the game of like tuning, maybe maybe like running a, a team of racers and maintaining their cars individually. I don't know. Can I get a can I get a show of hands in chat? Um, how many people like actually play Forza? Forza. How there many people? Is. Yes or no? Yes or no? How how many people play Forza? I'm just curious to see in my chat. Yes or no? Um, and in Lawrence's chat, how many people we got? Because uh, <laughs> so like it's interesting because I see like I have I I did <laughs> I see a lot of past. Um, but I wonder if sometimes, okay. All right. I think Forza may, may be more popular than I think it is. Mm. I think that, I think that might be, that might be the case. Uh, well, what I get, again, I, I think if you roll it back to sort of the value proposition, why wouldn't you, if you have game pass and a series X, that's true. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's yeah. not going to cost you any anything else. Also, I just noticed this. There's no there's no number on Motorsport anymore. That's so right. So I feel like Infinite and probably a lot of Microsoft first party franchises they're not they're moving away from iterative releases. So mm -hmm. it's just going to be called Forza Motorsport for the foreseeable future, where they add cars and tracks. But that's like it's a platform. Uh, so when you get Game Pass, you get Forza and Halo. Not individual games, but the concept, <laughs> the, the the service. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's exactly what it is. Um, and it's a what, what an amazing value proposition Game Pass is. Like, I to me, every time I I see what they have and see how much it costs, it's like totally fucking worth it. Absolutely, talk, just one hundred percent. So, um, good on good on Xbox for still still offering that uh, that value proposition for for Game Pass. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's really interesting because the no matter what um, game game console makers had to had to burn some money to buy a foothold in the market whether you know and typically that was selling hardware at under market cost but now Microsoft is burning money in another way they're mm -hmm. just buying developers and funding the development of games to get their monthly service numbers up which is a really interesting strategy and uh, it's kind of hard to say no at this point it's also been working really well I know that they were they've been uh, bragging about their Xbox Game Pass numbers in the last few months. So, uh, and I think people are starting to take notice of that. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's kind of fascinating, really, if you if you go back and think about it, because Microsoft was the first company to launch a monthly subscription service way back with Xbox Live. Uh, they were the first ones to ever do it, and mm -hmm. all throughout the 360 PS3 generation their Xbox Live numbers were like going up and up and up. And, and they were getting crazy amounts of money off that. I, I recall that even if, even though Microsoft consoles nev never really outsold Sony consoles, they still brought in more revenue because of their subscription services. So it's crazy that like 15 years on now, uh, we can kind of see the evolution of, of that business sensibility. So it worked really well for them for the past 10 years. And now they're they're like doubling down on it as the future of their entire Xbox service. So yeah, yeah. Um, what about Everwild? Do you know anything about Everwild? It looks fun. Um, it looks it. I I gotta admit. Oh wait, sorry. I was thinking about Grounded. God, I mixed these two games up. They got announced. I, I they and they look very similar. No, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. At least with this, Everwild looks different uh, than Grounded does. It's like. It's like the opposite of Monster Hunter. I guess you're trying to find hurt little animals and heal them. That's, yeah, that's that's exactly what I thought too. But it's also it appears to be four player. It's it's co-op. Yeah, from what I can tell, I, that was another thing. Just to go off on this a little bit, they didn't. They really did not show much gameplay in this, <laughs> like at all. It was mainly just trailers, um, and I don't know that that really bummed me out because I know whenever they talk about game showcase. This is what they did last time with their other game showcase, and that was even worse. This one's better because they've announced larger games, but there's still no gameplay in these trailers. Um, and I, I, 
it's just really bugging me. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's bugging you, but it's not it's it's bugging me. Hmm. Uh, I would prefer to see gameplay, but weirdly, I think that this is this is largely just presumption. But it seems to me that games sell more on concept than they do on actual gameplay. I yeah yeah I would agree. Um, I mean. I, I'm I'm always reminded of like No Man's Sky about how like and and mm -hmm. and it, yeah that's that's a really kind of special case to call out but everyone was sold on the idea of that game that's right um and I was I was waiting for gameplay and when they showed gameplay I was like that looks bad like that looks boring as shit mm -hmm. uh, but nobody really seemed to 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 grab onto that and then the game came out and it was boring as hell um, <laughs> now granted a lot of people uh, feel like it's been fixed since then. Um, but I it don't took, know, it man. It took two years, though. <laughs> yeah, but I, I feel like, as much as I want to see gameplay, because I feel like that's more representative and gives me a better idea of what's coming up, I think from a marketing perspective, showing gameplay is maybe not actually that important. It could be. It's, I don't know. I'm just... To, to me, this is like a, this is a know your audience type thing. And the hmm. Xbox game show, like when, when they're showing the showcase and we're all co-streaming it and everybody's watching it all together, all of us are looking for gameplay, right? So... I think all the people that are, because we're all enthusiasts, we're all we're all people that are into this stuff. So, I feel like they should be showing gameplay in in these showcases specifically, and um, and I think if later on they want to release a story trailer or whatever else for the you know the the broad audience of who's whoever's googling Everwild, then totally fine, do that. But for these specific events where we're all together, you know. A bunch of enthusiasts being like, "Show us our games," and then they then they give us trailers. Uh, I think that's disappointing for all of us. Hmm. So I, I I don't know that they're they're because I know what you're saying. I think and I think you're right. The potential for for a game versus the actual reality is always going to sell more because people are more excited about it. But um, this is they're now marketing to different audiences because all of this is online. Um, and before it was E3, and maybe they. they E3 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, was for for a broader audience for you know a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people besides enthusiasts, just people that would play video games occasionally. I don't know that we're there anymore. I I, I think that everything's getting divi subdivided so much into enthusiasts and and then into the, the broader audience and then into you know the people that really love Forza and like stuff like that. I feel like we're getting down into the nitty gritty of of each marketing beat, and each game should be marketed differently. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you think about that, but mm, I think that I think that considering ourselves the core uh, market might be, believe it or not, like might be a bit of a might be a bit of a misattribution. Um, oh, I, I think, don't think we're the core. I don't think we're the core market. I'm just saying who the, who they're talking to right now today. That's mm, that's what I'm saying. Got gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I guess I, I think you're right. Um, I, I guess where my head goes is like it's easy for me to assume that if they had gameplay they would have shown it, um, which may not be true. Uh, it may just be like, well, we have gameplay, but it's not as pretty as the trailer. It's just so, so show the trailer. But I, I guess we're, so. This is just a pure theoretical question. Would you rather see gameplay or or nothing at all, or would you rather see a concept trailer or nothing? That's a, that's a great question. For me specifically, I'd rather see gameplay. Um, I don't necessarily need to see a trailer. Uh, that doesn't, it doesn't really get me hyped, uh, either way. <clears throat> um, and at this point I'm so, but that's, this is me specifically. So, and, and I, you know, I've been following this industry. I've been working industry for 15 years. Um, and I don't know that everybody feels that way. Uh, I, I'm not sure that that's even how, like, at let's, well, we can ask chat again. Would you rather see uh, a trailer or nothing? <laughs> um, if you know, put in chat if you want to see a trailer, write trailer. But if you want to see nothing and wait for gameplay, put nothing. Yeah. That's a great question. That's a great question, Lawrence. Um, I, because for me, I would rather see nothing. I just and just wait for the gameplay. So. Mm, yeah, I, f I feel like man, then you're then you're caught in a really tough decision. So. Let's say that you're uh, you're rare, and you have gameplay, but it runs at five frames a second, and it's really junky and and 
you know that the game is maybe not going to look that way when the game launches and then you have to deal with like people being mad at you that the puddles aren't in the same spot and like i think that there you open yourself up to a lot more headaches by showing gameplay even if you put that little disclaimer at the bottom you know people don't read that oh right so yeah showing alpha gameplay of a game in development feels like it's feels like you have so much to lose and so little to gain <laughs> these days yeah. Yeah. Uh, because man, there are some people who will get very angry about yeah, that. So I wonder, uh, yeah, I just, I wonder about the calculus of it. I'm, I'm sure there are all kinds of factors that are in conversations that we never hear, but, uh, I see, I see a lot of people in both chats hilariously saying trailer and a little bit of gameplay. That was not what I asked. <laughs> not at all. I didn't say that. Um, because we all want gameplay and that's the thing is that it's all boiling down to everybody wants gameplay. Uh, that's why I asked the question, trailer or nothing, because I think you're right, uh, Lawrence. The, the marketing beats are, they're like, all we've got is this trailer. We're not going to show alpha gameplay. Um, so we can only, we can either show this trailer or we can wait and give them gameplay that we know is good. Um, and that's why it's generally trailer or nothing. Um, and that's, so, I yeah. think that's, that's where we're at now. Uh, Billy says, so wait to show something. Um, if, if you have to wait until gameplay looks good, you can only start marketing games in the last two months of development, pretty much yeah. ever. Yeah. Uh, so you have to, like you have to. And also this was supposed to be a big celebration of Microsoft Studios. So every studio has to report in with something, right? Yeah. Um, I, I guess not every single studio was represented, but most of them were. Uh, it's tough. That, I don't know. That, I, it's super tough because then you got the internet turning on you. Because then you got the internet being like, "You didn't show any gameplay." Because <laughs> you know what do you do? I don't know. Trailer over nothing, gameplay over everything. Yeah, I, I see, can see that. Well, yeah, but that's not that's not what I'm. That's that's not the question. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the question. Um, because we all know everybody. Everybody always wants gameplay, and that's and that's what I'm saying. Like Lawrence just said, it's true. You'd have to wait until the last two months before the game came out, before they actually gave you any. I mean, like, Cyberpunk is probably an exception to the rule. Um, but uh, most games, I would say, that they're not going to, they don't have gameplay that they're ready to show until a couple months before the game comes out. So. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. Alpha gameplay of Biomutant? Man. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a, I don't remember that. It's a game that got canceled, I think. Oh really? <laughs> oh yeah. Was that the? Uh, what was that? No, it's still happening. Never mind. THQ Nordic. Yeah, that's right. It's the it's the angry raccoon thing. Um, what did you think about the the Don't Nod game? Um, was it Tell Me Why or what was the name of it? Oh boy, I already forgot. I don't know. It looks I, like a looks like a Don't Nod game. Yeah, it's a it's a Life is Strange. Um, let's see here. What's what's next? What's next? Oh, <laughs> that Ori. <laughs> The Ori upgrade. Yeah. Ori re-release. <laughs> That's... Yeah. A, I mean, it, the, didn't they say like 120 hertz? Am I wrong about that? They did. They did, yeah. They That's did. cool. I don't... Oh, Tell Me Why was the Don't Not game. Looks cool. You know? Oh, that'd be fun. I like that they're... Uh, I guess I guess this is kind of the, the tech forward part of it, right? Is they're showing you in super slow-mo what 120 FPS looks like because they're not streaming at 120 FPS. 20 FPS, fps and most people don't have 120 hertz displays it's a good way to do it because it uh, honestly i could see the difference mm -hmm. I, that, that was a good way to do it i thought um I, that said though i don't care uh like it's neat and it, i'm really glad they upgraded the game because the game already looked beautiful but i is this going to get people to to buy it more i i don't i don't know what this was for i don't know why they showed this to it's me. uh it's it's smart delivery. Sorry, you may be hearing tinkles right now. I'm pouring some coffee. Oh, no, no, no worries. So I think the idea behind that is 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 one sort of telling you that the implicit promise of something like Game Pass is that all your games will upgrade with you over time for free. Two is that when you download games you already own on a Series X, that smart delivery will automatically upgrade it to whatever version is appropriate for the platform you're playing it on. That's that's neat, very and neat. Yeah, these are, these are all like value adds to Game Pass, really. And then I guess three is we're adopting 120 hertz, even though basically nobody has that in their living room displays right now. But it's like, 
I guess Game Pass is not only easy but also forward forward thinking is I think the idea behind Ori. Yeah, you're not just buying one game, exactly, Trey. And you're not even like I think that's all just to remind you of all the fringe benefits of, of Game Pass, which at yeah. some point it's going to get so scattershot, it's going to be hard to, to really message it in a punchy way. Well, I was just about to say that. So I, all these things that they're adding and telling us about, I, I think it gets lost in the shuffle. Mm. Um, there, and by the way, all great features, and I, that's why I keep saying Game Pass is such an amazing deal, because it totally is. Um, but that said, now i got to sit down and like, you know, basically write out a bulleted list of what what game pass has and why why it's so great and then I, that becomes weird because then it's like well why are you just game pass has blank on it like it has cyberpunk or whatever and then they're like everybody's holy shit but now you got oh it's got smart delivery so it'll upgrade your game you can play it on pc but then it's all day and day it's like oh my gosh it's way too much um not easy to say to your friends for us totally works but if you're talking to somebody who just wants video games, you know, like, uh, then it's got it's got 300 video games on it. That's a better that's a better marketing beat than the smart delivery stuff. So, yeah, smart delivery is a weird feature because it's it's a feature that you should never know is working. That's that's the value of it is that it's yeah, completely yeah. invisible. Uh, yeah, I I agree. I I feel like they are they are trying the Amazon Prime tack where they just keep lumping things into this one service. To get it to the point mm. where you will never ever not have it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a really that's a really good way to put it. I, I never even thought of that because that's totally what Prime is doing. Mm -hmm. And and um, if you think about it, like Prime's list of list of things is weirdly scattered and it's not. I don't think it's that there's one person that's going to use every part of Prime. It's that Prime has something that will appeal to everyone. And I guess that's maybe the approach they're taking with this is that. No matter what kind of gamer you are, Game Pass will have something for you. Mm -hmm. If you, even if it's you just want something to show off your 120 hertz TV, uh, maybe that might be like five people. But hey, we got those five people. Yeah, I uh, Wombat in your chat said. I mean, the people watching this are also probably aren't people who want games as such. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Wombat. They're talking to the enthusiasts, so we're all going to understand the smart. I mean, smart delivery stuff. But the, I'm I'm talking more for the broader audience there. Um, as to uh, as to how how and why they're marketing this, and and that's that goes back to my previous point about how I think they're marketing this to the enthusiasts, and that's why it's weird that they're showing trailers. So, um, regardless, uh, let's see here. They showed Outer Worlds, mm -hmm. and they also showed Grounded. Outer Worlds, um, I thought was interesting because the DLC is not included with Game Pass. Uh, at least. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, yeah. That 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 was the thing that I was going to be hyper interested in. If like if Game Pass not only gets you the game on day one, but also gets you all expansion content. But yeah, on the bottom right, the Outer Worlds base game is available on Xbox Game Pass. Paralon Gorgon must be purchased separately, and Xbox Game Pass members get ten percent off. So hmm. that's that's interesting. Weird. Okay, I didn't. I I was just assumed that it came with Game Pass, but. Interesting. Yeah, good eye, Lawrence. It's it's a good it's a reasonable assumption, but like, I've been curious about how how Game Pass benefits individual developers. Um, most indie developers I've seen report that merely being on Game Pass means that more people buy your game, which makes no sense at all. But uh, I think the idea is that like, on Game Pass, you play a game, then if your subscription lapses or you just become more more aware of games that you may not have ever heard about and then you start to buy adjacent games so if you pay play a game that you like that's on game pass and there's another game that's similar to it that's outside of the game pass program it seems that more people just buy that it's just being in the ecosystem mm -hmm. and directs their purchasing power so yeah this mystic, is a uh, okay. mystic says uh, mystic says most game pass games don't include dlc from what i've seen i, I didn't know that i didn't know that which is a so. uh, man that's pretty interesting and also, I feel like we're a couple years away from gamers getting real mad about like a game coming out on Game Pass, and then a month later, a DLC content pack, and then people are being like, "Wait a minute, this should should have been in the game." And then right, that right. fuzzy line of where a game is complete and where paid content starts to exist. Well, I I feel like we're gonna some people are gonna get heated about that. I would I would agree. Uh, right now, it's you know like. It still feels great because Game Pass is so cheap, and so it feels like you're getting a ton of games for free. 
But yeah, once we get into that little spot when they're like, wait a minute, this should have been the game initially. <laughs> so that would be, uh, that is weird. Um, Grounded. Uh, I love rare co-op games ever since Sea of Thieves, so I'm excited about Grounded. comes out in a oh. few days. Ooh, uh, not rare. That's Obsidian. Oh, oh, is it not rare? Oh, what, what was the other What was the rare? Everwild. Uh-oh. Yeah, see, I mixed them up earlier, too. It's Uh-oh. tough. Uh-oh. It's tough, man. It's weird because Everwild looked like a tiny person game, too, but it's not. It just has larger animals. <laughs> the tiny person game. It but did. You're totally right. In Grounded, you are a tiny person, so... Well, Obsidian's th- also good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're good. It yeah. looks it looks fun. I'm not, hmm. to, to this to this point. I'm, this is what I mean is that I'm still I still got lost in the middle of this conference because I was like, they just showed a bunch of trailers. Nothing really stuck out in my brain, and so that that's why I'm I'm mixing these up now. They got announced at about the same time, and yeah, oh, the, yeah. it is four player co op. Uh, I guess theoretically that had some things that are closer to gameplay. Grounded did, right? It did, yeah. No, Grounded Grounded definitely showed gameplay. Because, um, I mean, they should have. The game's coming out in five days. <laughs> so uh, I'm actually surprised it didn't show more of that to be to begin with. But um, It also doesn't then, look like it's voxel-based. Like, you can you can build bases and stuff. But am yeah. I going to be punching trees again? Or, excuse me, like blades of grass, I guess? Definitely. You're definitely going to be doing that. Oh, man. Um, Good stuff. That's what... That's what it looks like to me. And then also, this the game looked cool, but again, just a very brief trailer. Avowed. Uh, neat. Cool. I'm excited <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah. I was... Uh, I... The the tone of Avowed looks really cool. Yeah. That you're just yeah. like... I... I they're, the, the whole like first-person dungeon crawling thing, like Ultima Underworld or Dark Messiah of Might and Magic... Uh, Deep Down is another game that like never came out. Oh, yeah. That kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. I do like the idea. Oh, it's set in the Pillars of Eternity world? Really? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that that is a... I hope that's a game where you're stuck in some crazy, huge, labyrinthine underground dungeon and you just have to roll around and fight monsters and level up and get gear and stuff. Also, I feel like yeah. that, that fire arrow hitting that pile of rubble has got to be a Dark Souls reference. Am, am I just off about that? It looks like a bonfire. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice. That. Yeah, you're, you're you're totally right. They might, might be a little uh, homage to Dark Souls. I think so. You know, it's like medieval dark fantasy. Maybe maybe to communicate that this is supposed to be a, a difficult mechanic-based game. Who knows? Um... But still, again, the same same deal. They showed the trailer, and then somebody talked about it with the same B roll over it, and I, I don't know. That's uh, it doesn't get me excited. Um, it's I was like, oh, that's cool. It looked like Skyrim, and that was and that was sort of what I got from it. Uh, I yeah, I'm not sure. What what game really excited you? Was there one game that you were like, I am so excited to play this? Was there any of those? Uh, the Crossfire campaign bizarrely because it's Ooh. it's being made by remedy i don't i really don't care about crossfire but uh any any single player content from remedy i'm always i'm always perking up for uh it was it was weird to see stalker 2 uh yeah that, i was actually like and i've heard a lot of people talk about stalker the first one and really and really like talk about it like like it's a cult classic like they love it so uh, so that's pretty cool that they're making a stalker 2 it was announced in august 2010 Stalker 2? Stalker 2's been in development forever. Oh my gosh. And I guess sometime in 2021 is when it's supposed to come out. But yeah, 11 years, theoretically. Holy shit. Stalker's a, Stalker is a cool game. Um, I feel like it, it hit exactly when no one was making that, that kind of game for PC anymore. So yeah. they, you know, in a weird way, in the way that like, I'm going to do it, in the way that like Dark Souls resurrected an entire kind of game... I feel like mm-hmm. Stalker was that for a lot of people who really, really liked open world environment sim shooters. Um, Metro, to a lesser extent, Metro is a little more linear, but yeah, Stalker, for me at least, gave me a lot of that Fallout vibe that Fallout 3 did not provide. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, who knows? I I just don't have any fix on what Stalker 2 would be. Because, <laughs> man. I mean, it's probably going to be a really, really hard survival game, um, which is. Uh, 
kind of like Tarkov, but I mean, they'll probably have multiplayer too, but it, it seemed a little like, I feel like it's like Tarkov, but supernatural. Um, that's the way, that's the, the feeling I always got. I never played the first Stalker. I just, I've watched a lot of gameplay of it. Um, and that's, that's how it feels to me, but who knows? Yeah, that's what it is. It's got that Euro jank that I think people were more willing to put up with, uh, to get that kind of game back then. I'm, I'm just wondering now if there's like a full Euro jank shooter. Uh, oh, we all honestly thought Stalker 2 died to make Tarkov. It's, it's not the same developers, is it? I don't, I don't think so. Hmm. I, maybe, maybe it is. I, I didn't, I didn't think it was. I guess when it comes to like Slavic first person shooters, maybe they, uh, they're interchangeable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they basically all are. It's always a set in a post-apocalyptic world where <laughs> everything sucks. Um, but uh, yeah, I was surprised to see that. Uh, it was cool though. I, it's exciting that they they were able to get it out of development hell. I didn't. I had no idea. Hopefully, it developed for it, uh, ten years or whatever. Uh, Psychonauts two was cool. Um, yeah, seeing sure. that. Uh, the I, the art direction of, of that trailer was was pretty astounding and, and theoretically there was some gameplay in there I guess in engine at least yeah um, there was there was a little gameplay I think I think that we did see actual gameplay um, there was that other motion comic game that I, I was watching earlier on my my screen it was uh, as dusk falls the Tom goes to the mayor game basically <laughs> that's um, exactly what it looks like wow yeah that's it was it was it just felt weird. It, there was also it's weird they called it from as dusk falls because it reminded me of from dusk till dawn of just like yeah we're gonna hide yeah. out in this ratty ass motel and then also thieves show up and there's going to be a lot of like hitchcocky intention about this nice family getting thrust up against these horrible thieves and but it turns out they're not bad people either they're just and i'm like okay, okay. <laughs> now, they also showed <laughs> destiny yeah um which is fine uh it's just more of the uh, games as a service thing that I think they they try to reinforce. But it's always weird when they show trailers for those in these games showcases because we expect new games. So I, I feel like it sort of takes the wind out of your sails unless you're a uh, Destiny diehard because you're well, not you're not seeing anything new. It was, I mean, um, it was a new expansion, right? It is. A, yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it's a new expansion. But it, but what I'm saying is like, but it's a video game we already know about, mm. and these and these are generally like huge reveals for brand new video games. I think um, the age of that is coming to an end. It is, yeah. It's it just really going to be platforms and services and announcements for new content. But I think for new IP, you gotta like you're gonna have to start looking at like the double A twenty dollars Steam releases. Oh, I guess yeah. we. Yeah, there weren't. I guess there's new Fable, but that again is a new version of a thing we has already existed before. I mean, they had they had like the thing is like new IP. They announced a few of them, but there was very little to see, which is kind of what how it goes with new IP. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unless, well, unless that like they they start a new an entirely new game, they develop it in complete secret for four years, and then right at the end, they show some gameplay and then launch it. Like I feel like that's the only the only yeah. way to like do it fully complete correct for gamers because they i mean they showed the what was it avowed the that's a new ip um grounded yeah ever wild uh, oh i gotta apologize for my internet uh spectrum is uh shitting on me as no. normal no so yeah that's normal so i apologize everybody you should be able to hear us just fine but uh the video might be a little a little laggy so i apologize everybody it's the usual um there was also the uh, Warhammer trailer. Yeah, that looked that was cool. That's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Man, uh, 40k is just so cool, and I I love the the like Left 4 Dead game type. Uh, I played I played a gang of Vermintide just because it was Warhammer and the Left 4 Dead format. But if there's a ver like a, a 40k gun based game in the vein of like Vermintide where there's multiple classes and you can like level them up and get gear. Oh my gosh, I'm so into that. Me too. Me too. And, and Vermintide I actually never got to play a lot and I wanted to play more of it, just never did. So I'm really excited they did this. Oh, but it's so um, beautiful. And then let's see what else we got. I hope uh, it scales like De Destiny I feel like has a really good way to scale nearly infinitely with the way that it like has hard versions of missions and stuff like that. I can only assume that uh, this this game's gonna be like that. Also, I just like what is what is with Warhammer 
games and in the last 10 years there's been like two or three every year and they're all decent i just don't get how how warhammer has so many games yeah i don't i don't know either um that just that they're obviously they're clearly like they love that license and they're like they're licensing they're really good at licensing it out <laughs> so oh they know. didn't they, they don't do the hard versions of stuff anymore in destiny oh okay it's been six months since i played destiny so maybe everything is different um there's also a uh, tetris effect yeah that's cool which, which looks like tetris co-op I, I assumed you'd be excited about that i am i mean that's that's not particularly an entirely new mode for tetris uh but it doesn't have to be you know there have been a million tetris games yeah yeah i'm, I'm glad it's coming to other platforms uh for me it's mostly like the more the more sales bites they get out of that game the more likely it is that it'll make its money and that tetsuya mizuguchi will get to keep making stupid plur hippie games which i just <laughs> love um let's see here optimized single player what is that even I, that phrase man i have no idea what that means for t tetris effect connected optimized single player we made I mean, a mode that's only it, six it, if anybody would know it'd be you but i guess not um uh, <laughs> optimize a tetris game more frames i, I guess know. who knows i have no idea um let's see here what else okay I, apparently game workshop just completely went bananas with licensing the 40k property so a million developers are yeah. that makes sense yeah. uh oh yeah the crossfire the crossfire campaign which will which will be fun there was uh, what's what's goo game, game where you go around sucking oh, goo. Oh, the gunk. Yeah, the gunk. The gunk um, reminds me of a game that would have come out on Xbox, Xbox Live Arcade in like 2013. Um, yeah, no, the, the gunk didn't. It looked like Mac, and I was like, okay, whatever. I, I liked it. I I like the the world crafting looked pretty cool, but again, it's like you look like a tiny person in an overgrown world. It's in it, that, in that very rare style yeah. animation, and yeah, yeah, with that like bouncy walk animation, and your person just kind of a squat little little orb when you're running around. I like it though. Yep. Uh, I'm into it. Also, like, I feel like it's been a bit of an undercurrent lately to have games that are expressly not about shooting and destroying. That's kind of a, a weird hippie turn in in game concept. That's what that's what happens. Ah, yeah, Recore, that PS2 that, era feel. Yes, yes, yes. That's a group of people, and, and they they seem to be like to be like relative. They they wouldn't they wouldn't keep making them if they didn't make money. Yeah, well, I think in this case so. it's it's Microsoft connecting a fire hose of money to all their all their studios. Uh, and then uh, and then and then uh, and then Fable. Yeah. Or, well, let's see here. There was the medium by Bluebird, but that's already been announced. That's been uh, they showed, I guess, theoretically something closer to gameplay. The like switching between realities of being a yeah, that was cool. That's kind of neat. Uh, uh, um, and then yeah, Fable or wait, Fantasy Star Online Two remake, Crossfire, and then yeah, I. So it's funny because I was uh, I think about a week ago. I just ticked through every Microsoft studio and saw that turn way the playground. Yeah. Playground was working on an unannounced RPG. And for some reason it just did not even for a second click that that might be a new, the new fable game. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Um, Ever play uh fable at all. Like, were you a big fable fan? I played them, but I wouldn't consider myself a fan. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed them well enough. Uh, I liked fable three quite a bit. Um, I even played like the Connect Fable game. I I liked them, um, and I, I appreciated that the Fable games have a really cheeky sense of humor. It's just like just oh, oh yeah, extremely yeah. British, um, painfully British sometimes. And I think that that was represented in this trailer with the the little fairy getting eaten by a stupid frog. Um, yeah, I like it. It looks it looks and feels like Fable, even though it's not I was, a. Uh, I was really excited no because gameplay. I've never been able to sit down and actually play a Fable. So now I'm. I'm glad that they're doing this because I can. I personally now can stream it, <laughs> so I'm excited to uh, to play. Because I watched my roommate play a ton of Fable Three when it when it came out, and he hated it. <laughs> uh, he just kept he kept playing it. And I was like, "Why are you still playing this?" He's like, "I don't know. I don't like it." <laughs> so, um, but so I, I remember people being negative about Fable Two and Three, but but loving the first Fable. 
So hopefully they'll go back go back to whatever made the first fable work. Fable's a fable and people's reactions to it yeah. is an extremely strange dynamic. Just super super weird. It was a uh, fable was kind of the no man's sky before no man's sky. You had Peter Molyneux up there just shooting right. his mouth off saying any goddamn thing. And then people thought that that would actually happen. So when fable 1 came out, it was this weird mix of like, hey, it's some of the things he said are are kind of true. And some people really vibed on that because it was like it was and it was also kind of in the infancy of open world action RPGs. So I think the game type also really worked for some people. And it was it was a pretty big outlier on the original Xbox yeah. in terms of its tone and gameplay. Uh, but yeah, I think as the games went on ca- kind of like Mass Effect, it became more and more obvious what the limitations were and how certain mm-hmm. parts of the vision just weren't going to happen. And I think people <laughs> like some bitterness started growing. Also in Fable 3, not to mention that you, as the king of the entire nation, had to like roll out <laughs> Paido for three hours straight. Um, pretty pretty sick. I actually love that. But then again, I, I like games that kind of in, almost almost aggressively invert your expectations. Yeah, I thought that was funny. That's, uh, that's me. I, know, I just know a lot of people. I know, like I said, I, I have very little experience with Fable. I'm just excited to try it out um, and see if it if it actually lives up to the, uh, to the hype. Because that... People in my chat were, you know, they, they were exploding when we saw Fable, so. Oh, boy. I, yeah, Fable Fable's one of those franchises, I think, that's really tied to a lot of people's warm, warm, youthful memories of playing video games. Also, it's like, it's been long enough, and Fable's in that magic yeah. window of, like, millennial yeah. nostalgia that I think, I think the time is ripe yeah. for a really good Fable reboot. Yeah. Um, uh, and playground games are are fantastic developers, absolutely fantastic. Uh, so I think Horizon shows that they know how to present a fun, freewheeling mm-hmm. spirit with their games, and layer it on top of a, a bunch of very comprehensible progression mechanics. So I can see them bringing the same thing to Fable, yeah. which is really, That's, really uh, exciting. I, I'm I'm excited for it. I uh, I just I'm excited to finally experience it for myself. I can't wait for you to oh, play. I don't know Fable that I'll ever one. do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. But... What? Oh, I was just wait, play which fa- oh you're yeah, just going to play New Fable. Go okay. back to Fable 1. Damn it. Uh, sorry, I thought uh, when you talked about playing, oh, I was like, maybe, you're going to you know, play Fable I, 1? Maybe, awesome. maybe I will. Maybe I will. Just because you you seem so excited. <laughs> you should, just for one evening. It's, uh, it, man. That's also when, like, that's also when I feel like the, because game consoles had storage and like 3d processing and like now you could have like people doing vo and stuff fable was also part of this big like oh we're finally going to have these emergent narratives and video games are going to finally grow into the adult medium they're meant to and then when fable one starts like within five minutes you're (laughs) farting until you shit your pants and it's just like everyone thought fable one was going to be the citizen kane of gaming and then it's just like I'm gonna, I'm gonna blast ass so hard that people throw up um, oh man fable rules well i uh i i you know i don't know the uh <laughs> this was a little bit of a disappointment for me because there was not much gameplay but otherwise um it was i i thought this wasn't as good as the ps5 uh showcase i don't know what did you think hmm I'm I'm confused by the intent yep. a little bit. Uh, with a with a PS5 showcase, it seemed like Sony was saying like, "Here's what you can expect in the PS5 ecosystem in the first two years or so." And I was like, "Okay, you know that's a pretty powerful showing." Um, this I thought was going to be purely Microsoft mm-hmm. Studios uh, as like Microsoft's big flex of like this this is the maturation of all of the studios we've been snapping up over the past four years like it's finally hitting it's all colliding right now we got a new console we got all these devs we got all these games on game pass but then they have trailers for other things too like fantasy star online 2 remake and i'm it makes me wonder why they chose to include the things they did i mean Uh, it it may have been it may have been as simple as they had stuff to mm. show um you know like they were just like I, i i'm sure that they were planning to show some of that stuff but like it may have just been like well we've got some fantasy star stuff that we could show that it's good game because they showed gameplay in that trailer um so maybe that's what it was i I don't know for me i think uh i agree bruce like for me as somebody who really wants to get just super super like vibrating tickled about video games this 
there's not a lot that really did it. I, th I think the fable, the fun. fable reveal was, was, was a fun. pretty good punch. That was a pretty good wow moment. And I don't know that I don't know that the PS5 showcase had a a beat. It, it, it honestly, I mean, Miles Morales uh, the only thing that did it did it for me in PS5 was the console reveal, because um, they hadn't shown it yet. So that mm. was cool. You're right. That that was that was cool. That was kind of cooler than a, a concept trailer yeah. for Halo Five. Or yeah. sorry for that Fable. Was, that was neat. I I guess it, if I uh, if I read in ten, and I'll throw this one to Twitch chat too. Is is anyone that hadn't yet signed up for Game Pass? Good question. Have you been convinced yeah. to do it now? Because I feel like that's kind of what this whole conference was for. Um, I don't know. I see some. Uh, uh, I see some no's. In, in your chat yeah i see i see a, a only one only a couple of yes what, uh what about for, yeah, what about my hit? chat Man, are moves. you guys uh, convinced to sign up for game pass disco joe says yeah rangers already rangers already got it hell yeah disco joe it's uh yeah i don't know um i yeah i think what's most likely is like somebody mm, somebody buys a series x i don't know that Many people have been convinced to do that yet, but Halo Infinite's probably the best shot. Um, you buy a Series X, there's a card in there for a month of Game Pass. So you already get Halo Infinite. And then I guess the real test is a month into your Series X when your free trial runs out, do you renew? And I imagine most people would, because if it's have Halo Infinite for another month for $12 versus paying $60 to keep playing Halo Infinite, people are just going to... I think that's that's really the move, is you get people get people in... Uh, with like ten dollars or a free card, you give them all these games for the yep. first month, and then you take them all back. And that's when somebody's got to bust out the credit that's card, right. and then they're in no, for yeah, life, that's, basically. That's exactly right. Um, uh, well, I have to go and see if I can give, fix my internet. <laughs> oh, you know it never I'm ends. So sorry, man. It never ends over here. Um, but uh, but thanks for talking with me about this. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I, I, no, I know Lawrence, I tend to you, talk you, a lot. I just get really excited not, when not I, at all. I see video games. So. I, I love talking to Lawrence about video games and everything else. So, it's, it's great. And so, Halo uh, and uh, Fable. Halo! <laughs> Halo and uh, Fable. And Fable. <laughs> I'm, I'm just excited that, like, all these games, or most of them theoretically, are coming to PC. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, that's, that excites me the most about this, is that they are they're just doing that the same like day and date on PC and it that makes it great for me because I'm already I've been a PC gamer for 20 years so it's uh that's exciting to see that they're they're finally making that transition I don't have to worry about like picking up a controller so so awesome. um all right yeah uh I guess now's the time to say goodbye to YouTube bye uh, YouTube good, bye bye YouTube